Okay. All right. So we are officially rolling now. So yes, the first question was. Um, so I, so this talk is going to be about Drupal as a backend, GraphQL as a way to query it. You could also use REST and uh, JSON API instead of GraphQL, and then uh, um, querying it through uh, Node.js, JavaScript, middleware, or front end, and then using Swell as the front end UI framework. So one of the questions that Tom just asked was, what was it that I was telling him about, about one of the benefits of it? And yes, we are going to come to benefit, but the, the benefit that in particular I was talking about was PWAs, progressive web apps. So when you have, a Drupal itself can become a progressive web app uh, with the right, right ingredients. But, um, but these um, modern JavaScript front end, they are very good at turning your your applications into PWS, um, <coughs> progressive web apps. And what are product progressive web apps? They are basically web applications that offer, when you open them in your browser, in your mobile browser, the browser prompts you that, do you want to add this to home screen? And when you do that, uh, say if you say yes, then the icon will get added to your home's Android or iOS home screen. And from that point onward, when you, when you launch that application from this home screen icon, the, the the website opens as an app, as a standalone app, where it takes over the full screen, doesn't have the browser UI around it, and then you, uh, as you tap around, it's uh, hopefully your web application is a single page application, but it doesn't have to be. Um, if it is a sim single page application, now you are not doing any page reload and you're staying within that uh, JavaScript context. Um, and you can you can use local storage, you can, I just showed Tom how in the demo app, I was using uh, a, uh, what is it, uh, um, the camera to upload. So where there's an image upload, I'm using the camera to take my own picture. Um, so, okay, so um, yeah, I have to keep uh, the, uh, yeah, touching this. Okay, but it's again back to green. I don't know what to say about that. So does that mean it stopped the recording? I think so. Yeah, see, I, I, I cannot deal with that. So, okay. So, um, yeah, the, the, it's very common for laptops to go to sleep. I mean, that's not nothing new. So, but anyway. All right, so let's get uh, started. Um, my name is Jitesh Doshi. I'm with Spinspire. We'll talk about Spinspire at, at the end screen. But uh, just one thing I would say is I will launch, uh, I will put this video on, there is already one version, shorter version of it. I will put a much longer version of it on YouTube. Um, YouTube slash Spinspire is my channel. Please go ahead and uh, subscribe. Uh, we are going to talk about Swell, Drupal 8, and GraphQL. Uh, you can substitute GraphQL with JSON API or REST API if you like. Uh, what we, our goal is to make, turn a Drupal site into a progressive web app so that you can add it to your home screen and works like a native, almost like a native app, you know, almost is the keyword. Uh, it has a lot of features like uploading pictures and taking pictures and all that. So you can do a lot of things. So let's go over the reasons why we won't want to do it. Performance, Drupal page rendering, as you know, is, 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 is nice, but it's not the fastest, especially the perceived performance is even more important. So, and you will see uh, Sapper and Swell, they have some tricks up their sleeve that make the perceived performance even better. And you will, uh, so they do things like prefetching and all, so that uh, by the time you actually reach the page, it's, it's much, uh, it's already ready there for you to look at. So, and that has a, an implication on the, on the user experience. So you get a better UX. You will see in the demo, I, I'm gonna show in a second, that um, there are page transitions, meaning to say, normally in a, in, a, in a web site, when you click on a hyperlink, even if it is internal within the website, um, the, this page disappears and the new page appears after a few milliseconds or a few seconds sometimes, and all that. And the transition is somewhat jarring, while if you are a single page application with the proper transitions, uh, you can have sliding transition, fade transition, flipping transitions, all kinds of transitions I'm gonna show you uh, again, PWA, progressive web app, that's what we were talking about a second back. Uh, your website becomes a, uh, almost like a native mobile app. 
So <coughs> I'll show you that in a second. And transitions we already. So these are some of the benefits. Productivity. And this is the big one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm evangelizing for Svelte everywhere I go nowadays. Um, Svelte has been around since 2016, but I, um, I picked it up recently last year, I think November, December. So it's been only three or four months. But seriously, it, it is significant enough, the change, it, the improvement is so big over React that I, I think we should, we should absolutely switch. Now, the, the biggest benefit is productivity. Your, it, it, when you pro, uh, develop with Swell, there is so little to learn. There is, there is so little to code. Your, you, the amount of code you write is less. The amount of code that the compiler generates. Like I said, Swell is a compiler, not a runtime. So it compiles your HTML, JavaScript, and CSS into JavaScript. And the resulting code is smaller. Uh, the bundle is smaller. But that's less important than the amount of code you write. And you write less code, which means you are introduced fewer bugs. Um, most of the tricky parts of the code are generated by the compiler. You don't have to write it, which, uh, which is very helpful. So overall productivity rises. Now, what about the productivity of this combination? And that is Drupal and uh, JavaScript front end. So yes, you use right tool for the right job, right? So Drupal is our favorite CMS and headless Drupal is even better. It allows you to manage your content in very complex uh, ways. You can you can structure your your uh, content like with paragraphs and whatnot. So you, it gives you a very smooth inf information architecture. It gives you uh, publishing workflows as you can do with content moderation and so on and so forth. It gives you all the security, etc. So you get your CMS, all the features, but when it comes to visiting your website, so you administer your website using Drupal's admin interface, but when it comes to presenting your website to the end uh, users, the, the consumers on the web, uh, that you can do using the setup, the Svelte and Sapper front end, and we'll look at it, which reduces, and we'll see. It's easier to customize now, because a, a Drupal theming, if anybody has done theming, you will, no, it's not the easiest thing. I mean, uh, uh, tweaking uh, a few, uh, Twig templates is one thing, but then actually producing a slick user interface is something else um, and it's harder. So Swell, ten, uh, uh, Swell templates and JavaScript will make it much easier, you will see. And then finally more secure, well that's, I have a question mark in front of it, but I do believe that it would be more secure because you will be, uh, your actual Drupal site will not be exposed to the public internet, right? What will be exposed is your Node.js app. Now, you may say, hey, you can introduce, uh, but, you know, security vulnerabilities in your Node.js app. That is true. It is possible. But then there is much less code. I mean, if you look at the amount of code that you're exposing to the public internet through Drupal is much, much larger. Yeah. So, so I do believe it's a smaller attack surface. The API is smaller and everything. All right. What are the components? The components are going to be Drupal for content management, GraphQL module. Drupal has a module called GraphQL that we will enable uh, for querying, for allowing to query. Sapper is the middleware. Sapper is a Node.js application uh, that is a companion framework for, for Svelte. And of course, the last one is Svelte. So Svelte is a JavaScript UI framework. It's actually a compiler, not a runtime. I know I'm repeating myself a little, but that's okay. I'm assuming this is an, an audience that doesn't know a whole lot about Svelte. Anybody here uh, knows about Svelte, has heard of Svelte before yesterday? Yeah. When I was, okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, probably nobody. Has anyone uh, used or tried to use Drupal in a headless decoupled capacity? Okay, most, at least half, if not more. That's good. Um, so so you, um, the, can, can uh, some of you tell me what kind of front ends you were trying to put with the decoupled one? Uh, Node.js, uh, Happy.js uh, as the server, and then um, um, uh, React.js as the front end. Okay, so Node.js and React.js. So Node.js will, in this solution also, Node.js is very much there in form of Sapper. But instead of React, and like I, uh, before you entered, I was saying that I have given talks to do the same thing with React at uh, last year's uh, 
Florida Drupal Camp as well as uh, GovCon in DC and other places. So, so yes, it's I'm not uh, like I was saying. I'm not coming to Swell without knowing the React. I have you know earned a living at React for the last four or five years. Um, so, so I have been doing React very intensively. I still do, right? And uh, I do. I, I realize that there is very little to be gained by continuing with React. Of course, Swell is not in the mainstream yet, so the mainstream is still using React, but We'll see if we can replace it. So, oh yeah, yeah. The question is: Is it open source? Yes, it's very much open source. Go to svelte.dev. Svelte is S V E L T E dot dev. If you go there, you'll see, uh, you know, a lot of resources. All right. We will do the steps. But before we do the steps, let's do a demo of the end product. Okay. So here, here's the end. Product. This is running on my localhost 3000. Let me increase the, yeah, hopefully. So if you, yeah. Oops, what, what did I just do? How do I scroll? Okay, yeah. So this is running on localhost 3000. Uh, so let's uh, just take a uh, look at this demo. Now, the actual Drupal site that it uses is running here on the a to d couple yeah this one so this is my drupal site so let's start from the drupal site because you guys are all familiar with drupal let's start there so this is a standard looking drupal site with some dummy content generated by devil generate right now the only thing i added to it aside from this uh, you know menu admin menu toolbar and all that kind of usability things but the the a significant thing that i added was i went to modules and i added GraphQL. So there are two GraphQL modules. First is GraphQL itself core. Uh, oh, sorry, GraphQL. And then there is GraphQL core. Very confusing names. What the GraphQL module is the core of GraphQL. And the GraphQL core module is the one that adds the group Drupal core entities to GraphQL. OK? <laughs> Yes, it is a little confusing. I was confused myself. Anyway, now why did I not use REST API or a JSON API? I, tr I did try actually. In fact, I was trying to use, so REST API is very limiting. It's, it has, I mean, you have to make multiple calls for everything and, and you get, so it's, it's, it's difficult to use. JSON API, which is now in core, um, is better. But trust me, it has much to be desired in terms of usability. So I was, and Ted was showing me actually some UI, which I didn't know earlier. And uh, there are ways to, there is, a, there is a JSON API Explorer, just like there is a GraphQL Explorer, which I will show in a second. Um, but overall, <laughs> I still like a GraphQL because it's, it, it's driven by a specific syntax. There is a, there is a GraphQL interpreter, uh, which, there is a, uh, there is a schema to it and so on and so forth. So when you go into GraphQL Explorer, which we are going to look at next, if I go to configuration, web services, GraphQL, so if you cl click this and then you click on schemas, remember if I had not enabled the second GraphQL core module, I would have no schemas here. So you, you, you have the capability to do GraphQL, but you have no, no schemas, no nothing uh, ready for you, nothing to query against. So this is the GraphQL core schema. When you click on Explorer, you get this. And so this is the last query I was running. Um, let me show you. So GraphQL, if you are not familiar, it's a query language for web services. Um, JSON API tries to give an alternative to the same thing. Uh, I believe somehow that GraphQL seems to, to win in my mind share at least. If no, nothing else, because because in JSON API you have to build your uh, queries, etc., yourself. And yes, uh, Ted showed me the JSON API Explorer with which I can I can it can help me build the query. But but yeah, there is still a syntax, etc., that is built into GraphQL. So when you start typing something, uh, when because I'm in Node article um, now, I cannot get into all the details of GraphQL syntax. But when you are in Node articles, look, I mean, if I press Control Space. I see completions, right? So these kinds of things. And then if I add, for example, if I put um, this, uh, look, this is field image. And it, 
when I added field image, it said, hey, field image is a, co is a, is a composite uh, um, thing. You see, you can put it by itself. You should, it has a, if I hover on it, it says field image of type field node article field image must have a selection uh, of sub fields. Did you mean something? So, yeah, so it's basically telling you that you have to add sub fields, otherwise you are not using this correctly. So, because of all these things, I think um, I like GraphQL. Now, there was a very significant objection that people raised against GraphQL and I had the same objection myself and the GraphQL, uh, JSON API you can use as get request, especially when you are not making any modification, you are, you are using get request, right. And then uh, Hector out there, he um, mentioned that, well, oh, but you know, you are doing post request in GraphQL and that is an, a, a problem. In fact, I hit upon that uh, problem myself, why should we be doing HTTP posts when we are not modifying anything? And he had a philosophical objection which I agree with, I also had the same, but I also had a practical uh, problem which is I want to turn the, my Drupal website, oh, sorry, my front end into a PWA, progressive web app. Now PWA, what are, if you don't know much about PWA, there are three components to a PWA, three things that make a T PWA before the browser will recognize your app as PWA. One, it must be served from an HTTPS um, server. Number two, it must have manifest.json file. Uh, manifest.json, it's a manifest file. It basically describes what's my icon, app icon, what's the theme background color, what, what is the layout of my screen. Is it standalone, full screen or uh, you know limited or whatever dot json, manifest dot json, j s o n, JSON, yeah. So that file, so a https, second manifest dot json and third, very important, first two are easy, uh, well kind of easy if you, but the third one which is service worker, it must have a service worker that captures that response to fetch requests. So the idea is that your application is ready for offline usage. Now it does not have to be offline usable but at least it should be kind of trying its best. So their idea is that if you have a service worker, if you know what a service worker is and you are writing a service worker and you are handling the fetch request, then, then you will take the next step and make it offline ready to the extent that you can. So the issue there, now how is that related to GraphQL? The issue there is that um, GraphQL queries, even retrieval queries, not a modification, those are called mutations. Uh, even retrieval queries usually go as a post request, HTTP post request. And if you know the philosophy of, of HTTP, uh, the semantics of HTTP request methods, then you will know that post is supposed to be for modifications to the server data. They are not, it is not supposed to be for retrieving data, right. But that is the default behavior in, in, in GraphQL. So I, because of that, I could not uh, enable my service worker to cache the response of GraphQL queries which should be cacheable, they are just retrievals, but I was not able to, to cache those and I said okay that is a problem. My, my PWA was still working because you just have to be to pretend that you are doing a fetch but anyway. So I wanted to make it right and then I googled a little bit but and I found out that it is very easy. First of all officially the GraphQL spec says that you can use GraphQL queries over GET. All you have to do is in post mode your HTTP request body is the query. In GET mode you add a query string parameter called query Q U E R Y equal to and then the query, the entire query and that is officially in the spec. Now the Apollo client which is the Node.js uh, 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 NPM module that I am using has a flag that says uh, use get for queries and that is it. I had to set that once I did that all my queries became get and now they are going through my, my service worker and uh, I think uh, that is a good thing. So in any case let me just very quickly show you uh, uh, this, this query. So here is a query where the parameter path is equal to article uh, slash pecus vale tudo or whatever right and then that is the input parameter that gets bound to this parameter here sorry here. Right, and then uh, use this is the name I gave article node by path, 
and then I am making this query. Do not worry too much about the syntax of it all, but then this is when I run the query I get this response ok. And uh, here is another one where is the history yeah here. So, this is my front page query let me show you my front page query. This is yeah this is much easier to understand I think. So, this is my front page I give it a deep two, two parameters that have default values limit of 10 and offset of 0 and then it in turn uses a node query from the schema that that was. So, when I started typing uh, writing this I basically you know I said ok control space help me and there it is the node query. I before I started typing I did not have any idea what I could use ok. So, this this is how I came up with the query and when you run this query you get 10 nodes and these nodes are what what is in there. It, it, the main thing I want is the alias um, because I am going to I am going to present a list of hyperlinks based on just like your, any front page Drupal front page what do the what do you have you have title and then you have <coughs> its link to read more and that is what this is about. Now, let me show you the actual application in action this is my um, node.js Svelte sapper application. Uh, I will come into uh, get into Svelte and Sapper in a second, but let us just use uh, use this app. Um, it is being rendered by JavaScript ok. Right now JavaScript is so, if I am going to click on about I clicked did you see how about a page came up it came through a transition let me do it again. Let us go to articles you see the transitions this is the result of uh, it being a single page application and you know Svelte having page to page transitions which again I can all of this code will be available um, on on the show notes or in YouTube uh, and everywhere. So, you I will tweet it as well right. So, so all this code will be available you you will be able to set it up. You basically all you have to do is set up a Drupal site set up GraphQL on it and there is one more thing. Uh, so, let us go uh, we will go to th through the steps. Can you, can you click on read more as well? Can I do what? Read more? Oh, of course, I am. I am going to. Yes. So, this is this is the I am just uh, telling that this page was created using uh, the the this GraphQL query. So, it produced this uh, submitted by so and so on this date. Uh, I got a date and I you know formatted it. Here is the title, and then now when I click read more, this is the detail. And look at the uh, look at this uh, URL article, <laughs> because whatever. Well, well, it's pseudo, right? So let me go back. So these transitions are happening. There is no full page reload. Uh, if I go to any other read more. So now here's the here's the fun part. I want to show you what's going on behind the scenes. Let's go to inspect and network. Let me clear this all of. This. So let's go to home. All right and clear and I am going to do a hard reload because I want to show you what is going on empty cache and hard reload ok. Now, I go to say it did that let us let us clear this. So, there was a bunch of uh, CSS image all those kinds of requests right of course, but here is the thing if I go to about it made only one request did you see the uh, what request it made it made about dot some some hash code dot js it did <coughs> not make a request i'm in the all all filter here it did it never made a request to slash about but look at the url the url says slash about oh i i i i, I by mistake hovered on something i shouldn't have hovered on let me um i'm, I'm going to show you so so if i click on about you see it made a request to about.js the second request that you see if you if you see very carefully it's it's uh, it has a gear icon in front of it the first request is browser making the request the second request is service worker intercepting it and then making the same request on behalf of the browser as a proxy so they are the same request they are not different okay but they are both to not, neither of them is to slash about they are to slash about dot e blah 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 dot js okay and that's the thing i want to show you because it is rendered on the browser by javascript now let me show you what happens when I say view page source. When I view page source, I, I 
anybody who has done any JavaScript app programming would expect there to be a bunch of JavaScript which is populating a template, right? But that's not the case. Look, there is no template. There is the actual, this is the about page. There's not much here. That's what it says. It doesn't say, you know, some placeholder, some span ID and now some JavaScript is going to inject something in here. That's not what it says. It says the actual source. Why? You will know the answer when you come back to this about and look at the network. This time, it actually made a request to about slash about and when it made that request, the server actually rendered the thing that, that we were doing so far within, within the um, browser with JavaScript is actually the server is capable of doing the same exact thing with JavaScript but in Node.js server. So, in other words, Svelte is read out of the box, it's ready to be rendered either in the browser or in the Node.js server and it produces the same exact result. And not only that, the server side rendered page, once it is given to the browser and it comes to the to the client uh, browser, the, the client side JavaScript, which is the same JavaScript that was on the server, takes over. This is called hydration. And then the server side rendered page comes to the client and from that point onward, all the user actions that the user clicking and whatever, hovering on stuff, etc., take happens in the browser. And and then it, it it goes it picks up right where it left off. So so that's called hydration. Now let me show you one more thing. I'm going to hover on articles <coughs> link. Okay, now watch what happens in the network tab on, on the site. I just hovered on it. I have not clicked yet. And it made already made a bunch of requests, right? So when I actually end up clicking, it comes instantly, and it does make more requests. But you will notice that all of those requests were JPEGs which are the the author author pictures okay so by the time i actually clicked on it the page was already ready for the i mean it was ready to be rendered <laughs> all the data had already been fetched so if you see let me let me do this again so that so let me go back to about okay and i'm going to hover see i, I hovered on it this time it has all the css etc it only made a request uh, for that graphql query uh, so now if I show you what came back in the GraphQL query, here's the response. This is the same response that, that we were getting earlier, right? So this is what I'm saying. The first 10, 10 nodes that it is going to show you, it has already fetched by the time I hovered. So now when I actually click on it, it has nothing to request. The whole page is ready. So this is what I meant by performance as in per perceived. The actual performance will be faster because these are smaller payloads, right? You have to, when you, you're transferring only data and not the entire HTML template and everything every time. But so that is the actual performance measured by computer. But as seen by the user, human user, the per perceived performance is even better. So this, this is what I meant. And now, of course, the user experience, the fact that these things are, are doing, you know, sliding up, stuff like this, that kind of nice. And I didn't have time to, I'm not a UX engineer, so I, I but you cannot definitely uh, do more. Yes, uh, question. So, um, how much of this depends on uh, constant contact with the server? How much of it can you run when you lose contact with the server? Very good, very good question. So, in other words, is, is any of this can, can any of this be done, uh, be done uh, offline? Okay. So, I will get to that. But bef uh, so, so the question is, do you need the server to be available all t all the time? Well, you can. First of all, Sapper sites, they have a built-in uh, command called export. You can export the entire site. So everything that can be crawled from the front page onward or any starting point can be exported to uh, the, the, the built-in, you, you, say, you say npm run export and it will export the entire site to HTML. And from that point onward, um, and of course you have, the, you have your uh, 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 service worker which will let it run completely offline. So that's one thing, um, but even if you don't do the export, but the, the problem with export is that it becomes a static site. If you add a new new uh, article to your to your site, then it's not going to be available, which is understandable. You know, you're you're offline. You're not going to see new stuff, right? But but uh, the one thing. So yes, so this can this can run offline completely uh, as long as you have the properly written service worker which pre caches everything. Right? So that's one thing. But I want to show you something else also. All this while we are seeing all these nice transitions, etc. Right? What would happen if there was no JavaScript? So let's disable JavaScript. 
so let me let me disable where is javascript um, does anybody know okay here yeah we go to settings and i'm going to disable javascript okay now javascript is disabled let me do a full hard reload okay mm. now when i click from page to page did you notice any change no transitions right because javascript is disabled but did you notice that the site is still working exactly as it was other than that everything works this is full page reload everything is still working nothing broke other than transitions or any javascript effects will break yes they they just don't happen but so how is this working well it's doing server side rendering on every request these these um, um, so uh, javascript on the browser is disabled uh, the these pages are still being rendered by javascript except the javascript is on this server node.js is doing it instead of browsers javascript doing it so and that is oh, react people call this isomorphic right it's a nice word but uh, i have been doing uh, uh, react for four or five years i have never used isomorphic so i would like to know anybody has used isomorphic <laughs> rendering no no okay so <laughs> but but the first thing i have I've just started using this well and the first thing out of the box i use is isomorphic rendering without ever do learn without ever figuring it out exactly how to to do it because the base template gives it to me right so so that's the, that's the point um you know that that the what you get out of the box with swell is far more than you would get um again one more thing is one of the major features of swell is they have these stores so this this is what would replace your redux stores anybody has who has done react programming and redux with react knows how much cognitive load it adds just imagine imagine yourself doing redux programming you have to write your first of all uh, you have to write your before there were hooks you would write map state to props map uh, <coughs> dispatch to props you are write, writing a reducers you are writing a global store you are you are writing a action creators and you have to dispatch those action creators and they create the action and that, that ends up in the root reducer that root reducer sends it to one of the individual reducers <sighs> oh my god all this because i clicked a button right while here in in swelt you attach your your call back to the button and the button simply modifies some local variables and and the the view changes and you will i will show you um so and that's it view reruns now if if the st state is shared between multiple components then you use a store uh, which is a sort of like the global store except there is not one single store in in redux stores there are single global store which have various sections within it right while here you can just create as many stores as you like and these stores are reactive stores you the the value of this store changes through whatever methods you have and the view instantly updates itself you don't have to do anything special so uh, i will launch into depending on how much time i have i have i uh, so we still have we are still 20 minutes into the oh wait no we are not when do you end when do we end 10:30 10:30 oh sorry okay All right, so we have only 10 minutes okay so 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 yeah so i just wanted to show you that this thing continues to work with javascript mm, with javascript disabled so let me just go through now that i have shown you the the um the end result i can go to the steps but before that we have a question just to calm down there's a half hour break between this and the next one so if you overrun okay <laughs> <laughs> thank you okay. thank you What is that? From a website to oh, PWA? <laughs> like, uh, oh, progress from a So unfortunately, that's hard to show uh, on this. Do you see this plus sign? I don't know if you can see the plus sign, but uh, let me just see. Yeah, see that plus, plus sign? This is because it's a progressive web app. If I click on the plus sign, it says install app to do local host, blah, 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 right? So, so that is a, um, that's, that's one of the things. So let me just show you. Uh, I have a, a slightly so, but of course, progressive web apps are useless to show on a desktop computer. It, it, right. It's fun when you show it on, on a on a. Uh, a yeah, well, I don't have that, but I do have something. So there is something called Swelt. 
www.dotspinspire.com. This is a progressive web app, okay? And it is showing, so I took some pictures with various people here. So there you see Amy June is there, and then there is uh, Tom. And so, so I just, so why don't I show you this one? Because this is um, something out on the internet. I had a HTTPS hosting, this is on Firebase and all. So uh, it, this will kind of show you. If I, um, if I uh, am here, let me, hold on, let me make sure that, okay. So I'm on this, I'm gonna whip out my phone and uh, we, is it okay if I take a selfie with all of you? Sure. Anybody has a problem? Just to cover your face or something. Okay. So, so, so here's. Um, so now, the people uh, who are watching the recorded video will not be able to see this, but I'm showing the audience. This is my phone. I'm sorry, I don't have an emulator. There is this uh, switch icon. I added that by going to this URL. You can do that with yourself. Go to the URL, and at the bottom it will say Add to Home Screen. And so I did that, and now. The same website that you are seeing on the screen over there is visible. I, it's very hard to see, of course. But there is no address bar. So this is a progressive web app. It looks a lot to, to a, an untrained eye. This would look like a native app, right? And now I have, I'm, I'm logged in, et cetera, so I can make some changes. I'm going to add, a, so this thing. I'm just going to add a, 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 and then, so some, some whatever. Um, text and body, and here I am clicking, if you look at the, I'm clicking on uh, on a uh, on a up file upload uh, button, and it allows me to upload any pictures that I have, as well as take a new picture with my camera. So I'm going to tap that, and here we go. So, smile, you're on camera. Okay, so, this is a picture it took. I'm going to hit OK. And it's uploading the picture. Uh, right now it's in black. It turned blue. Yeah, it turned blue. So it has been uploaded. Now if I hit save, look at the. Uh, yeah, look, this. I did not touch that. It just happened. Um, so that is a. So it showed up on, on our browser. So this is, this is happening because uh, JavaScript is subscribed to, the, to events on the server. And it was, I did not refresh that page and it just refreshed itself, right? And the picture showed up and everything. So the point is, um, so unfortunately, this is not the same app that I'm, I'm showing with Drupal, but, but it, it, it makes the point that progressive web apps uh, specifically, now refreshing, automatic refresh is not a feature of progressive web app. It's a, a feature of web sockets, right? But because it was a progressive web app, I was able to add it to my home screen. I was, it shows me, it integrates with my camera, file uploads turn into take a picture and all those things. I did not even, I did, some people think that I, I figured out the, the camera API in the browser. I didn't, it was just an input type equal to file. That's all that it is. And because it is an input type equal to file, which target images, it says, oh, do you want to take some pictures with your camera? So. So all these features that you get out of the box just because it's a progressive web app. So um, now let's go back to the steps. So what do you have to do? What do you have to do in Drupal to um, integrate it with this application? So first is uh, add GraphQL, which I showed. Then you have to enable course. This is important. Um, my application that I was demoing is running on here, localhost 3000. So uh, again, if you have done any uh, JavaScript apps, uh, you, will, you would have noticed that when your app, JavaScript app is running on one host, but it is trying to make an Ajax request to a different host. In this case, my website is um, this, not pbs.org, <laughs> sorry. My website is this one. Uh, D A D couple jitesh start blah blah blah. So it's a different server. So uh, browser prevents me from making AJAX request. You, your app running on localhost or swelt.spinspire.com, right? So your app is running on that while it's making a request to my Drupal site.com, right? That's not allowed. To 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 give that permission, you have to um, you have to 
change something and that is um, if I go into my server, here is the, this is the bottom of my, my services dot yaml. So, let me make this a little bigger. So, if you open your services dot yaml in sites default, um, again you might have actually seen this before, uh, you have to enable course. So, in your default dot services dot yaml, you copy that to services dot yaml and uh, course is already there except that it is disabled. It would say, say uh, course dot config enabled equal to false. So, you just ma make it true. Allowed ha headers will be blank. Uh, you put some headers, th these are the headers that that should be transferred from one site origin to another site origin. So, and again these are something that I just figured out over time. Allowed methods usually should be get. I, I can put it back to get and uh, a post as, as I said, once you have figured out how to make your a GraphQL query over post, you will be able to, uh, you can just turn this into get. Allowed origin again should not be open to star and everybody, you should make it, well obviously not localhost 3000, you can, but while you are developing, but eventually wherever your uh, JavaScript app is going to sit in public, that is what should be your allowed origin. This is Drupal allowing cross origin requests to itself from a different origin other than Drupal and the rest of them I left um, at default. So, this is the course configuration. Again, all of this will be available, the code to this will be available. So, you do not have to memorize anything. Set the permissions. So, yeah. So, this is something that I am I'm, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with. Uh, I had to open up the permissions and so, I have to uh, research a little bit how to not do that. So, if I go to configuration, oh, sorry, people permissions and look for GraphQL within that. So, here you see I had, do you see under anonymous user I have to uh, make bypass field security and execute arbitrary GraphQL requests, both of them turned on. That is not very good, right. So, I have to figure out exactly how to um, keep in mind that the user who is visiting my site, the JavaScript site, Sapper site is not logged in. If they were logged, uh, yeah, these are casual visitors, right. So, they are not logged into my Drupal site. I am not editing my Drupal site from this JavaScript site. The editing administrative function still happens on Drupal's admin UI. So, therefore, uh, all these users are anonymous and uh, for some reason I have to open these two permissions which I find a little bit jarring. I do not want to do that. Uh, so, I have to figure out exactly how to make this work without opening and whether this, maybe this is harmless, maybe maybe there is not, but I did have to um, to allow both of these. So, uh, these two, uh, the when you see these two blue check boxes, yeah. bypass field security and execute arbitrary GraphQL request under the GraphQL heading. I had to do that. Okay. Yeah. So, the solution is to create a, uh, uh, a trusted user that your server communicates to Drupal through? Good point. Uh, th that's good, but but then somebody could hijack my my somehow hijack. But yeah, there is there is uh, uh, the cross site request um, token. Those are there. So yeah, so so there is some some research to be done. Yeah. Couldn't do it in time, but yeah. Um, why? So that is that's the set permission and the create the sapper app. I will show you a little bit. I won't be able to get into all the details of it, but I will try to do do a little, and then. Um, then you have to create slash article and slash article slash slug, these two routes. So, slash article is what is, so when I go in my uh, website, sorry, in my uh, app, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, what do you mean? What is the question? Oh, that is swelt.spinspire.com, uh, here, swelt.spinspire.com, this is the URL. Okay, so yeah. Uh, now the um, yeah. So you see this slash article route. That's the route that I have to set up so that I can see a listing of routes. By the way, pagination is there. Okay, and again, just like everything else, when I hover on my pa pagination, uh, did I re-enable re uh, JavaScript yet? I did, right? No, I did. Looks like when I hover on it, you see 
it shows makes a, a graphql request so the pagination is also you know prefe prefetch enabled and so this is called prefetching in in sapper i'll i'll show you in a second all right uh, so that's and then finally uh, you make graphql queries from your um, sapper pages i will show you that as well so let's let's take a very quick look, look at I will not go into all kinds of coding details, but I just want to give you a high level idea of what it looks like. Bef but since it will be complete mumbo jumbo to you right now because you are not familiar with, with Svelte, I think um, let me just show you what we are doing here. This is my Node.js Sapper project. I created that using and you can create it by doing this. Uh, Again, the code for this will be available, but when I started, I said npx the git. Uh, npx is an npm executor which uh, is executing the git without installing it. And then the git is a, is a program that will clone any git repository, keep all the code, and get rid of the repo part of it, the dot git folder. So, and it knows that, uh, so you can say swell.js is github.com slash swell.js. You don't have to give the prefix. And then you say sapper template, and then the roll up branch of it. Again, this is mumbo jumbo. Don't worry about it. And then, and then you give, you give my project or my app, and it will it will create it will create a copy of that, which is what you are looking at. So I'm not going to do this again, right? And in this, the thing that you need to know is there are a lot of things. Again, I cannot give you a full tutorial in Svelte and Sapper at this point, but the one thing that I would like to show you is or the organization all you have to do is go into your routes folder so this routes folder is where sapper's life begins in there whatever is your index.svelte is uh, is the main thing so in fact if i look at this index this home page that's the index so you will see the index.svelte has everything that i have on my page so there it is Swelt and sapper like that fig caption figure there is the h heading one site name whatever the site name was i will just add another heading h2 hello drupal camp florida if i just save it because i'm run, run, running in live mode it adds that so so that that's the front page so your front page is uh, is index.swelt all of your pages are swelt files swelt components and um, these they um, get rendered as URL routes. Within that, I have this article folder. So because I have an article folder, it slash article is rendered by index.swelt in article folder. And that's that's the one. So this is where I'm making um, a, a query, the GraphQL query. So this is the Swelt component. Very simple. Again, I. If I have time, I'll show you a little bit of Svelte magic. But and then you make this preload request. This preload request is making GraphQL query. And once it so this is the GraphQL query uh, right here. Client. This is Apollo. Apollo client making client dot query. If you are familiar with this, you will you will recognize. And it's it's giving input parameters of limit and offset, which is sort of pagination. So all right. So that's. So preload method is basically the JavaScript method that can run either on the client or on the server, which means client being the browser and the server being Node.js, and it works just fine. You turn off JavaScript, this thing still runs, no issues, because it starts running on the server. Okay, uh, once you do those things, you get this articles page, that, okay, and then the tr transitions themselves are coming from but yeah this transition colon page trans so the, uh, again i cannot go into details you can look at the code okay i wanted to i know we are out of time so we are done but i do want to give you a very qu uh, quick motivation of why you should learn swelt for that if you go to swelt.dev there is a beautiful tutorial this is the tutorial from which i learned swelt took me about 3 hours and it gave me 80% of the information I currently have. But here's the REPL. REPL is 
you know read ex evaluate something something loop right ok. So, I want to show you this, this is what the simplest swell ok let me make the font bigger. Uh, this is what a, the simplest uh, swell program in the world looks like. You have a script tag a swell file app dot swell in this case consists of script javascript that is bunch of html and you could also have style uh, tag which would be you know like this style <laughs> and whatever style you put in here like, like you say h1 is a uh, color uh, red this this made the uh, h1 color red right but it makes h1 uh, heading one color red only for this component not for the parents outside of it and not for children either because this is scoped css ok. Although I did not put any qualifier. So, it is scoped CSS. Um, now, I want to show you something. Uh, this is easy anybody can do this uh, even twig templates can do this let alone forget about all the javascript frameworks twig templates can uh, template a variable right. But here is the fun part. Um, you create an input box and the value attribute is bound to the name variable and now you can say hello Drupal camp Florida. This is two way binding ok. Now, uh, react frowns upon two way binding and uh, angular likes it or whatever right. But and they say oh you will create um, race conditions two way binding create race conditions and then you know a depends on b, b depends on a or a depends on b, b depends on c, c depends on a and you created a race condition <coughs> right. No, not a problem that is not a problem here because uh, it is it is it it is taken care of. But here is the fun part this is the kind of things um, uh, let us say you have a timeout this is the kind of thing that you need uh, this is asynchronous action async and sync are same. So, you you put a, a 5 second timer and you change the name to let us say timer done and you put a 5 second and just wait 5 seconds and the hello world turns into timer done right. This second thing that I just showed you look at what you just did you simply modified a variable that is all you did you did not put set state to prop and map map state to props and you did not even do any of the hooks like um, use state or use effects you did not have to force any kind of um, repaint it just repainted how did it know to repaint re-render that is because this is the truly reactive framework. The other framework that you know by that name react is not reactive. So, therefore, <laughs> react is a very bad name for react <laughs> it is not reactive you have to call set state that is not reaction that is you telling somebody somebody waking up. So, oh I wake up in the morning on my own only when you you know shake me out of my bed <laughs> right. So, that is not reactiveness uh, reactivity is when you know it is morning and I wake up and or in this case a variable changes and the re-render automatically happens and how does it happen because the Svelte compiler has injected um, some extra code around this assignment and you can see that extra code right here it is very very simple it is so simple it is just this it is hard to believe that it is something that simple can do it right here. That is it uh, wait where is that timeout there set timeout you see this is the code that line got translated all it did was is it wrapped dollar dollar invalidate around the assignment that is all that is all it invalidates the context. So, this is a truly reactive framework there is a lot more I can show obviously we do not have time for that. But um, ok now finally I just want to uh, now that we are closing this um, this uh, presentation. Um, and again my name is Jitesh Doshi um, you I work for Spinspire we are a, a company a development company based out of Jacksonville Florida. Uh, this is a team of uh, our team uh, you know uh, there are more people but these are the ones who were there uh, on that day. Uh, you can uh, contact me info at spinspire.com or jitesh at spinspire.com and do subscribe to the YouTube channel youtube.com slash spinspire lots of sweat videos Drupal videos both there. Alright, thank you. Thank you.